the day of the eighth, Sunday after Pentecost, and uh, just a few days after the the new motto proprio of Pope Francis of uh, Traditiones Custodes. And the epistle for this eighth Sunday after Pentecost is going to be here in uh, Hartford. The epistle for this eighth Sunday after Pentecost taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8. Brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you shall die. But if by the Spirit you mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. For whosoever are led by the Spirit of God, <clears throat> they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again in fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption of sons, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. For the Spirit himself giveth testimony to our spirit, that we are the sons of God, and if sons, heirs also, heirs indeed of God, and joint heirs with Christ. And then the Gospel, take that according to St. Luke, chapter 16. At that time, Jesus spoke to his disciples this parable. There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and the same was, acu was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said to him, How is it <clears throat> that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for now thou canst be steward no longer. And the steward said within himself, What shall I do? Because my Lord hath taken away from me the stewardship, to dig I am not able, to beg I am ashamed. I know what I shall do, that when I shall be put forth, I'll put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Therefore call in together every one of his Lord's debtors. He said to him, to the first, How much dost thou owe my Lord? But he said, A hundred barrels of oil. And he said to him, Take thy bill and sit down and write, and quickly and write eight fifty. Then he said to another, And how much dost thou owe? Who said, A hundred quarters of wheat. He said to him, Take thy hill, take thy bill, and write eighty. And the Lord commended the unjust steward, for as much as he had done wisely. For the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. And I say unto you, Make unto you friends of the mammon of iniquity, that when you shall fail, they may receive you into everlasting dwellings. Those are the words of today's Holy Gospel. Son and Father, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. <clears throat> so on July the 16th, three days ago, which is a long time by today's standards, Pope Francis issued his new motto proprio, Traditionis Custodes, the Guards of Tradition. Well named, we mentioned the last two days, because it is the Pope's wish to be a guard of tradition in such a way that tradition is locked up forever in the, in the dungeon, in the prison, and under the guard of the modernist church so that it cannot get out, so that it cannot uh, <clears throat> do good for souls, so that it's completely crushed and destroyed. So it is a well-named uh, motu proprio, the guards of tradition, Traditionis Custodes, and one of the principal guards of tradition is Pope Francis, Body is following in line the previous guard before him, Pope Benedict, and following in line the previous guard before him, Pope John Paul II, following in line the previous guard before him, Pope Paul VI, who both, all of them, did their absolute best to take tradition and destroy it and make sure that it is dead in our holy church. They have failed in their mission, though they have done great evil down the last uh, more than 50 years, 60 years almost, but the, the nonetheless... Pope Francis is not making a radical break. Pope Francis is not doing something uh, shocking and scandalous. He is simply putting into practice what was written down by Pope John Paul II in 1984, uh, 36, 37 years ago, in Quatuor Ad Hincanos, where he said, This Latin Mass can only be allowed to those who in writing accept Novus Ordo completely and who accept Vatican II completely. And this Mass is only tolerated according to the whims of the bishop and cannot be said in parochial churches, and, and should not be used for weddings or funerals and, or baptisms, but only for celebrations for those who are personally attached to the more ancient form of the liturgy in order to help bring them into full ecclesial communion. And that, uh, that was what was said in 1984, in October 22nd, 1984, 
37 years ago in Cuatro de Ganos, and the reason for that uh, that uh, uh, decree of that year by Pope John Paul II. And now we find that in 2021, there isn't one part of the document of its eight articles which is any way contrary or against the mind of John Paul II. And yet there are many souls in the church today who are saying, well, Pope Francis is doing a radical thing. Pope Francis is doing something absolutely terrible and radical that Pope Benedict would never have done, and that he is not following the mind of the previous popes. And this is, in fact, completely false. Also, many people throughout the world have been looking to the Society of St. Pius X, which is supposed to be the beacon of truth and the beacon of the faith and the, and in our times. On July the 16th and July the 17th, and now it's July the 18th, we're waiting for the, the statement of the society. Many people are looking for advice. What am I to do? If we go back to 600 years ago, there was a trial of St. Joan of Arc. And they could not get her to lie. And they could not get her to be deceived by the wise judges. And that when they asked her questions, the Holy Ghost had given her the correct answers. So therefore, the wicked priests and wicked bishops, not the Satanists, not the, not the Masons, not the Communists, but the wicked priest and wicked bishop in charge of the trial said, we will send an advisor to St. Joan. We will, we will make a false letter from the King Charles of France, and we will send her an advisor that she, that said, you can trust this good priest, and he will be her advisor. And then he will make sure that she is advised wickedly and she is deceived by him as who she believes to be her friend, as well as by us whom she knows are her enemies. So they sent the wise advisor. And, there is a, and, and the, there's a very good explanation of this advisor, well done, in, in, the, in the 1927 movie, The Passion of, the Cry, Passion of St. Joan of Arc, in which the wise advisor is there standing next to Joan, and she is asked a difficult question. And many other priests in the crowd say, don't answer the question. That's a dangerous question to answer. You should not answer this question and don't answer yes or no. And they're signaling to her, but she looks to the advisor. And he, she says, what should I answer? And the holy advisor pretends like he doesn't see her. And he turns his eyes away and he remains silent. And she wonders, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? And she has complete confidence in him but he will not let her give her good advice. And he wants her to, to fall. And then we, when he should not, she should not answer the question. And, she's, and, the, and the judges say, you don't have to answer this question. And he turns her and says, it nods very quietly, yes, you can answer the question. So that the friend whom she thought was her friend, the advocate whom she thought was her advocate, the one that was to protect her and, and against the, 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 the wicked kings was in fact in the pay of the wicked, of, of, of the wicked bishop, in the pay of the, of, of the English, and who was an enemy of God, an enemy of her, and a deceiver and a liar. And we see this now, July 16, July 17, now it is July 18. And all people throughout the world of tradition are saying, what is Father Pagliarani going to say? What is the SSPX going to say? Many priests within the Navasordo, whose, whose lives are being ripped apart right now, who are living in the state of terror, who know that their wicked bishop is going to shut them down, who heard about the death of the Society of St. Peter in Dijon, France, only a few months ago, where they were expelled from the diocese, who know that they're, the iron fist of Pope Francis is coming down throughout the whole world. What are we to do? What should we do? What should we do? And they look to the holy advisor of the Society of St. Pius X, and they hear nothing, and they are not told what to do. Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre was once asked a question of a, young, of a family in, 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 in the middle of an island in the, in, the, in, the, in the Caribbean. What should I do? There is no Latin Mass here. There is no tradition here, and I don't know when a priest can come. And Archbishop Lefebvre wrote back and said, do not go to that new Mass. Don't go to that modern church. You, our ancestors had to stay home and read their prayers. Our own ancestors had to stay home and keep their faith and not expose it to the danger of that grave contagion of the wickedness of the new Novus Ordo Church. And therefore, don't go, but stay at home. She told them what to do. And when priests would come to the Society of St. Pius X many years ago, they would come to us and say, what should I do? What should I do? You should stop celebrating the new Mass. 
You should step out from the diocese and create an independent chapel. You should not obey the modernist bishop. And don't go through the false channels that, that they will send you through. They're giving you the runaround and the runaround and the run, and runaround and the runaround until they destroy you. So don't appeal to canon lawyers and don't appeal to the modernist Rome because they will destroy you. And here's an example, and here's an example, and here's an example, and you shouldn't do it. But stay firm in the faith and we will help you and support you. Don't fall into the trap. We have seen it happen so many times. July 16, on that very morning, Pope Francis issued the motu proprio, which had always been prepared well in advance. And he said, this motu proprio, which requires that the Latin Mass not be opened anymore in new parishes in the dioceses, which requires that any priest from July the 16th, 2021, until the indefinite future, cannot celebrate the Latin Trinity Mass without writing to Rome and getting permission which requires that any priest who already celebrates the Latin Tridentine Mass should, should renew his permission and, and to, to be able to continue celebrating it. And this Mass should not be celebrated in parochial churches, and, and the bishop must determine which days are best for the celebration. And also that if the bishop sees that any of the communities who are celebrating the Latin Mass seem to be divisive, that seem to not be fully accepting Vatican II and the new Mass, then these places should, should be shut down by the bishop. And they should, he has a provision to be able to do that. And so, in any case, these are clearly wicked advices and wicked commands. So they looked at the society and they said, what should I do? And there, is, there are birds chirping, and there is silence, and there is no response. This is a response. It is indeed a response. When I was in India, <clears throat> there was a police officer who was arrested and he was standing there, but he was not told. He saw a man beat to death. And it was video camera, because people have their cell phones nowadays. They were video cameraing the man being beaten to death. And the police officer could have easily stopped it. But he said, I was not under instruction what to do. And I didn't know if it was a private fight. I didn't know what was going on. And in the, yet the man clearly beat the other man to death. And it took a long time to beat him to death. And the police officer stood there and watched the whole time. But he said, I wasn't, I was not told to do anything. I wasn't involved. I wasn't in charge of that side of the street. He gave very different excuses. But the people were in a great clamor that this pre, this, this police officer should be himself arrested, should be himself removed from his officership, should be himself thrown in prison, or at least removed from being an officer and receive severe punishment. Why? Because he was an officer that stood by watching someone die. And he did nothing. And so he is guilty. So likewise, right now, the Society of St. Pius X is standing by. And the Society of St. Pius X is watching priests throughout this whole world stand and be, be, be threatened in their lives and say, see, and, and there's, they are standing by. The only brief statement so this morning of the Port Latin is all, all that it says is like, a, is like a commentary of a journalist. Well, Archbishop Lefebvre uh, was wise when he said that, uh, we sh that, that uh, what do you call it, if, if you listen to these guys, they'll slowly tear you apart. And Pope Francis is making very strict decrees. But there's no advice as to what to do. There is a sense of relief that, oh, they didn't get me. It's like a bunch of people standing against the wall and someone else gets shot and someone else gets shot. Well, at least it wasn't me. At least it wasn't me. But there is no one reaching out, those who are responsible especially, to help those in need. And this is a grave fault and a grave sin. It's also a clear sign that the Society of St. Pius X has been completely infiltrated and is a servant of Satan and not a servant of God. It is very clear that what is happening right now is that the Society of St. Pius X, which is supposed to stand for the truth and defend the truth against errors and facilitate others coming to, to the true, true, true faith, instead of doing that, it's standing by. And already in the last several years, multiple priests have come to the society, asked, what should, I, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? And we are nice to them and kind to them, like that wicked advisor was kind to, to St. Joan of Arc. And in his kindness, he tried to deceive her. In his kindness, he tried to make sure that she gave the wrong answer so that she would be put to death. And so this is the kindness that we see in the new society of St. Pius X. And it is an extremely wicked kindness. 
They are being silent and the birds are chirping and they're waiting to see what the reaction is. They're waiting to see what happens. And then when they see what happens, they will make some kind of statement. And the statement will have an escape clause in it. The statement will be, oh, this is terrible. I, I, the things don't seem to be wonderful. It's a shame that, that, that Pope Francis did these things and it's more restricting. And, uh, and fortunately, we don't have to follow those restrictions. Let's pray and let's have confidence and let God take care of things. When what God requires when a house is on fire is those outside the house should go in and help those inside and pull them out. When someone is drowning, those on the boat should throw uh, a, a, a buoy, a life buoy to the person that's drowning and not say to them, oh, I really hope you don't drown. I'm really sorry you're drowning, but I'm really glad I'm in the boat. The fact is that they must have an obligation, a grave obligation to help their neighbor. When we consider our ancestors in Catholic tradition, Father Cummins being a great example of one in Australia, the gentle Father Cummins in Australia, who was told by his bishop, how dare you and other bishops also, why are you coming into my diocese? You don't have permission to come to my diocese. Why are you saying the Latin Mass here without my permission? What are you doing? And Father Cummins responded to the bishop of the diocese and said, it is your obligation in divine justice, according to the virtue of justice. It is your obligation to provide the true Mass to your faithful. You are not providing it. It's your obligation to teach them the true faith and provide them the true sacraments. You are not teaching the true faith. You are not providing the true sacraments. And these people need the true faith. They need the true sacraments. They need the true mass. And you are not giving it to them. You are fu not fulfilling your obligation of justice. Therefore, I, as a priest of God, am obliged under pain of sin. Sub gravi, he said. I am obliged under pain of sin as an obligation of charity to provide what you are not providing by the obligation of justice. When you fulfill your obligation of charity, of justice, my obligation of charity will be relieved, and I will go back to my duties in my home place. But until you fulfill your duties in the obligation of justice, I must fulfill my duties of the obligation of charity, for the church is on fire and souls are in need. The souls not only in Connecticut are in need, the souls in Dijon, France are in need. And the souls in Dijon, France have been abandoned because the bishop said, you don't need your Latin Mass anymore. You don't need your fraternity of St. Peter anymore. And so they shut down and they leave. And by doing this, they abandon the flock. And they are disobeying the law of God. But why are they doing it? Because they are following a false principle of a false obedience. And they believe that obedience is more important than the faith. When the faith is far superior to obedience, and obedience is only obedience when it is in, li when it is in line with the faith. So we had this motu proprio of a few days ago, and priests and throughout the world are afraid. What am I to do? What am I to do? And what is happening? They are not being assisted by the public society of St. Pius X. And this indicates that what the purpose of the SSPX is, is to be for those that can escape on their own, for those that maybe can find a place to rest and say, I will, I will come to the society. And those who go to the society, they will be they will be brought into a corral. Like the example given by actually Taylor Marshall, that there's going to be a corral. And that they're going to gather all the animals and gather all the cattle and drive them into a corral. Once they're in the corral, what are they going to do? Well, then they're going to run them down the sheep chute. Then they're going to shear them. Then they're going to slaughter them. Then they're going to kid lock them up inside the corral. And that, that, well, what is the corral? It is very likely that one of the corrals intended by modernist Rome is called the Society of St. Pius X. And that some people will start going to the Society of St. Pius X masses now that were not going before. Well, at least there's one in my diocese, but they're not expanding in the same way that they're, they're supposed to be expanding. It was, and that, and that the, they're not answering the call of the faithful as they're supposed to be answering the call of the faithful. And they're not assisting the, the, the priests in need as they're supposed to assist the priests in need. And they're not saying publicly and clearly the truth. What should be a statement from Father Pagliarani right now? He should be stating very clearly that this, this document, this motu proprio, is evil. This motu proprio is, in fact, the full implementation of the previous decrees of Autor Quattro Ariganos, Sumorum Pontificum, and it is, fulfill, it, is, it is a full implementation of it uh, of that decree. And that decree, the first decree was evil, the second decree is evil, and so now the third decree is evil. And that, the, and that we cannot go along with any one of these three decrees because they make the Latin Mass and the true faith dependent and hinging upon the whim of a human superior. Whereas God's law is not under the whim of a human superior. 
The human superior rules an only human thing, such as where you are stationed, or what you shall wear in some particular case, or some practical thing. But the human superior has no power over the divine things. And here we have a problem that now the human superior says, no, I think you don't have the right to say the mass given to us by Jesus Christ. You don't have the right to teach the faith given by Jesus Christ. You don't have the right to reject the mass written by Satan, which is called the new mass. It is a mass that comes from hell. It is a mass that is displeasing to God. It is a mass that has brought hundreds of millions of people away from the true faith and their belief, and hundreds of millions of people away from the church. They've left the church because of this new mass, and it is a mass that is an expression of the theology of Vatican II. It has destroyed the priests that celebrate it, which is why the good priests are getting away from the new mass. The good priests are saying, I must go away from the new mass. I must celebrate the old mass. I don't want to be with that new mass. And they are right to be away from that new mass because it is displeasing to God. And it's a duty of the Society of St. Pius X to make that very clear. So that when the priest comes and says, well, I'm saying the new Mass and the old Mass, of course you should continue to say the old Mass, of course you should say the old Mass, not only more, you should say the old Mass exclusively. And, yet, and now we have yet another document from the Pope, which repeats the decrees of Quatroordiganos, the decrees of Simonum Pontificum, and the Society says, well, it looks like in the La Porte Latine, they say, it, which is one of the society French websites, it's I say by 10th French websites, says, well, it looks like they're no longer the extraordinary form. Now, only the only unique form is the new mass. And, that, and, yet there, and yet we should know that the so-called extraordinary form is exactly the same as the indult. And that the, 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 new, the new mass, which is called the ordinary form by Pope Benedict, called the unique form by Pope Francis in, in his decree of a couple of days ago. Unique form means the same as ordinary form. It's the unique form of the Latin of the, of the Latin rite. Both of them condemn the new the, the Latin Mass. This should be made clear by the Society of Priests that extraordinary means not to be used except when the ordinary is not available. Just like indult means can only be used for those circumstances where the where the the tradition the ordinary form cannot be used. And now unique means exactly the same thing. And we say, oh, they've changed the term. Now they've changed. They haven't changed anything. So they say they've changed where they have not changed. <coughs> and then and then <coughs> they don't give. <coughs> The correct advice to the priest, and so some more pontificum, or rather the, the this this document, Quattro de Ganos, excuse me, uh, the um, modo proprio, uh, the uh, the uh, Traditionis Custodes. Why isn't it that since it is the same doctrine, it is the same doctrine of the Traditionis Custodes that was in some more pontificum in 2007? Some more pontificum came out in July of 2007. Bishop Vallee commanded that we priests of the society should sing the Te Deum in gratitude. And myself and many other priests throughout the society, that Sunday after July the 7th, condemned Sumorum Matificum and said that this is an evil document, not a good one, and we refused to sing the Te Deum, to have a hymn of praise for a wicked document which says that, and that's Sumorum Matificum, Summa Pontificum is essentially the same doctrine that is contained in, mod, in the Modo Proprio Traditionis Custodes. The only difference are some of the practical directives that were in, in, in Summa Pontificum are not exactly the same as the practical directives of Traditionis Custodes, but the principles are exactly the same. And they are, they are, they are like, a, you can compare it to like the Sede Vicantis. Some Sede Vicantis say that the, uh, I don't say he's not the Pope, I just, for me, he's not the Pope. And others say he definitely isn't the Pope. And some say, I'm not sure if he's the Pope, but I'm not going to treat him as Pope, which means they're all three the same. They don't accept him as Pope. But amongst themselves, they fight. Amongst them, they say, we are not the same, but they are the same. Just like 1,700 years ago, the, the Arians said, I believe that Jesus Christ is not God, but he's very godlike. And others said, he's not God, but he's just an ordinary man. And they fought against each other. So likewise, Quattro Edicanos, Sumorum Pontificum and the Modo Proprio Traditionis Custodes of a few days ago, they are just like Arians fighting about how much man Jesus Christ is, how much and how much non pope the Pope is, and yet they all essentially agree on the same thing, which is 
that you have no right to celebrate the Latin Tridentine Mass without the express permission of the bishop and the pope, and that the allowance of this Mass is only by the extraordinary toleration of Pope Benedict and Tumor and the indult toleration of Pope John Paul II and Quattro Reganos and Ecclesia de Adflicta, the one that comes in between in 1988, and that there is no right to celebrate this Mass because you're a priest, no right to celebrate this Mass because it's the immemorial Mass of our Holy Church, no right to celebrate it because of the decree, a quote, quote, primum, that was um, this, made by, by St. Pius V in 1570, and all he did was ratify in that decree it was already the right of all priests. He simply put it in writing. It was already their immemorial right. But he put it down in writing in 1570 in quote primum. And they say, well, quo primum still does not stand. No quo primum according to Quateriganos. No quo primum according to Ecclesia de, Ecclesia de Adflicta. No quo primum according to Summorum Pontificum. And guess what? No quo primum according to Custodiciones Custodes. Permission only from the superior because he's in a good mood today in all four documents. What's the difference? And now the, now the, now the Pope simply gives new practical conditions. And if the practical conditions are the only problem, here is the theological moral problem of those priests of the indult communities and the new society of St. Pius since stand on the sidelines. And that is, <coughs> since we accepted by Ecclesia Dei Afflicta in 88, since we accepted by Samoan Pontificum, and we accepted the, 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 the Quateriganos before that, <coughs> that <coughs> the Pope is given permission and we can celebrate Mass because of the Pope's permission, since that's the reason we can celebrate the Mass, if the Pope removes the permission, then I must stop celebrating the Mass. But if we don't celebrate the Mass because of the Pope's permission, when the Pope removes the permission, I continue to celebrate the Mass. If we reject the new Mass because it's evil, we continue to reject it when the Pope says it's good. And if we accept, but in the case of these four documents, they all are four essentially, the substantially the same. The only difference is minor details as to the implementation of the indult, of the allowance of the extraordinary, or the form that is not unique, which is called the Latin Tridentine Mass by these modernists. And yet, Taylor Marshall unfortunately says mistakenly, this is the most radical document, the most radical move on the Pope Francis's papacy. It is not radical at all. It is 100% in conformity with the previous popes, 100% in conformity with the will of Benedict XVI. Remember Benedict XVI said in Tumor Pontificum, this is an experiment of three years. And after three years, let the bishops send in their, their thoughts to me, and I will reevaluate whether or not I will put into, continue to put into practice this, this bull, this decree, this motu proprio. Well, the three years became 13 years. And in 2020, and the Pope Francis said, in 2020, the will of Pope Benedict was finally fulfilled. It took 13 years before they finally sent their letters in. And the bishops throughout the world expressed a great concern at the negativity, the disunity, and the problems caused by an excessive opening of this old mass of those who liked the, the former <coughs> type of liturgical service. So we must therefore, I'm very concerned about this, says Pope Francis, and therefore I will decree and command to take immediately effect on this July 16th the following eight decrees. And so he made them all take effect immediately. This Sunday, for instance, one interesting thing to note in various chapels throughout the world, part of the decree is that the epistle and the gospel, whenever the Latin Mass is celebrated, must be done in the vernacular language. There must be a proclamation of the epistle and gospel in, Latin, in, in the vernacular. So it's interesting to see in those churches where the Latin Mass is still being allowed, because between July 16th and today, one or two bishops, a few bishops throughout the world said, I'm going to still allow the Latin Mass in my diocese. One or two of the conservative bishops said that. Well, what kind of Mass do they say today? On this Sunday, the eighth Sunday after Pentecost, are they doing the epistle in English or are they doing the epistle in Latin? Are they doing the gospel in English or are they doing the gospel in Latin? Because if they are taking seriously the decree of Pope Francis, they are obliged by their own principles under pain of sin, to say the epistle in English and to say the gospel in English. They themselves say, including the bishops, we are allowing you to say this Latin Mass because the Pope said we can do it in Sumorum Pontificum. Well, now the Pope now has made more restrictions. Therefore, the bishop has no right to complain. 
Now, what about those people in the dioceses where their mass is going to be taken away, who are on their journey towards the faith and towards tradition, and, is, and now their, their mass is going to be taken away, and their mass is already being changed? Well, can I go to a mass where they read the epistle in English? Can I go to a mass and read the gospel in English? This is contrary to tradition, but is it a mortal sin? And unfortunately, the Society of St. Pius X, for many years, in fact, more than 30 years in France and in some other places, in many chapels, has been reading the Epistle and Gospel in English the whole time, because that was one of the changes made in the 1960s. And in some of the chapels that came to tradition and joined the SSPX, they continued to say the Epistle and the Gospel in English. And Archbishop Lefebvre left it alone. He didn't force them to say it in Latin. And so... In some chapels, they say the epistle in English and the Latin and and the and the and, and the, and the uh, gospel in English. When I was in France in 2008, and we had the Lord's Mass with the 25,000 people of the Society of Saint Pius X, and I was there with the Indian delegation, and there were 25,000 of us in Lourdes in France. And in that Mass, the, there was a solemn high Mass, and the, there was American deacon. <clears throat> So it was uh, the the the, uh, <coughs> the future <coughs> uh, uh, father uh, Themen. He was the Reverend Mister D, D. Themen at the time, and an American deacon sang the gospel in 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 Latin, and then he, during the mass he turned around and he read the gospel in English in French. An American reading the French gospel in France before 20,000 French who don't like American accents. Absolute stupidity. <clears throat> but the American turned around <clears throat> and read the epistle and read the gospel in French, which is not what we do in the Latin Tridentine Mass. But Bishop Filet had it done then, and it is, and that it's continuing to be done now. And now it is interesting that Pope Francis is going to make it a point he wants you, the devil, remember, one of our prisoners used to say very often, the devil does not require you to genuflect before him. He does not require you to lay prostrate before him. If you just nod your head, it is enough. And all they want us to do is nod the head to Satan, nod the head to his demands, but then there'll be another demand and another demand. It isn't a mortal sin to read the epistle in French. It isn't a mortal sin to read, mortal sin to read the gospel in French. But it is, it should not be done. And furthermore, when this decree is being made, as it was made by Pope Francis a few days ago, it must not be done. Because it is when, by doing this epistle and by doing the gospel in English or in French, what it is doing is I accept that the Pope has the authority to tell me that I can celebrate this Mass, which is a lie. God gave me that authority. I accept that the Pope can tell me that I can violate the rubrics of this Mass laid down by, the, by, the, by our ancestors and by the legitimate decrees of, our, of the Holy Fathers. And that is also a lie. And, it, and, and so the most important thing is, by saying the Epistle in English and by saying the Gospel in English, they are admitting by their actions, the only reason I am doing this is because the Pope is telling me to do it, and, or not, and that by doing it, I accept implicitly the new Mass. And I accept implicitly Vatican II. And I renew my acceptance of the new Mass in Vatican II. Just like when, it, when a young man becomes a, a subdeacon, he does not say, I take a vow of chastity. He does not say, I take a vow never to marry for the rest of my life. All he does is take one symbolic step forward, and when he makes that step, the step implicitly includes the vow. It includes it by the custom. It includes it by the rule of the church. He doesn't say, I do. He doesn't say, I accept. He simply makes one symbolic step. And in that symbolic step is truly, irrevocably, and implicitly contained the acceptance of the vow of perpetual chastity and perpetual celibacy. So likewise, any priest who on this Sunday says the epistle in English and says the gospel in English is implicitly and in, and and correct and truly accepting the legitimacy of the wicked decree of the guards of tradition, Traditionis Custodes, of July 16, 2021. And therefore, the priests throughout the world should absolutely refuse it. Furthermore, as we mentioned in the last two days, make sure that any priest who is celebrating the Latin Tridentine Mass, what is the advice SSPX should be given right now? Father Pagliarani should say, this is a tragic decree. It is a, it, but it is not that tragic. In fact, it's a blessing because it is making explicitly open what is all the wickedness already contained in Sumorum Pontificum. 
already contained in the end of Ecclesia Dei Inflicta, which so many people were happy about. But what happened to the Ecclesia Dei Commission? It was started in 88 to protect tradition. It was closed down in 2019. It's dead now. What happened to Morum Difficum? It was opened up to deceive souls, and it deceived them, and yet it will one day be closed down. Well, that day was July 16, 2021. What about the allowances of July 16, 2021? They will also be removed. They will also be er eradicated so that there is a killing of bit by bit of those souls who want to come back to tradition. It is a deliberate intention and a deliberate process and a deliberate organized, structured way of destroying the Catholic faith. You go back 800 years and what did Pope Innocent III say? Organized, ordered destruction is called Satanism. He said witchcraft is defined as the ordered destruction of all order. And where you see destruction, it may be an accident. It may be someone in a bad mood, but it is not Satanism. But when you see an ordered, a structured destruction of order, that means the Satanic is present. And what we are seeing here is an ordered destruction of order. It is not an accident that the SSPX that makes a decree within one day. When they had a problem about vaccines in Kentucky, they made a solemn decree that we accept the vaccines a few years ago. When, when, when Bishop Williamson made the terrible mistake of, 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 of uh, saying that he wasn't sure about the Holocaust, when he said he wasn't sure about the Holocaust, what happened? He had to write a letter of repentance and of forgiveness immediately. And immediately the SSBX denounced him. And, and, and that when some more Pontificum came out, they immediately said, thank you. And, when, and, and that the, the society can act quickly. And yet here we are on July 16, 2021, and it is being silent, silent, silent. Why? Because they are part of the enemy and not part of the friends. Because they accept the lies, they accept the evil, they accept the wickedness, they tolerate it, and they realize they're in a pickle. They're in quite a pickle, the New Society of St. Pius X, because we've accepted, we work with the diocese as regards our marriages, <clears throat> following the new principles of Vatican II and the new code and dealing with marriage problems. They accept graciously the confession allowance by Pope Francis, continually working and meeting with the modernists in Rome, being in indult ch chapels in certain places throughout the world, and, 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 and being friends with the conservative communities and having a nice relationship with Pope Francis, whose who's Archbishop who Bishop Filet said loves the underdog. And now they can't afford to say mean words. They have to be very careful. Remember when Amoris Letizia came out a few years ago? It was Novus Ordo Bishop Priests and Novus Ordo Theologians who said there are seven heresies in Amoris Letizia, and here are the seven heresies, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there are more beside, but we enunciate only these seven heresies, it's an evil document. Meanwhile, the Society of St. Pius X wrote a, a commentary on Amoris Letizia and said this document is a cause for concern, and they did not say it was heretical. The Novus Ordo priest said it was heretical, but the others said it's a cause for concern. And so who is who is is clear already then? Most clear, the Society of St. Pius X hierarchy is working for the modernists, is infiltrated and working for the devil, working for the enemy. Now we see more clearly today. And those who cannot see, it's because they choose not to see. There is a grave evil going on. And this and that what's happening is exactly what happens when the communists come into a country. When the communists come into a country, they create an anti-communist fake organization. So that when people want to fight against the communists, they will join that fake organization. And now what has happened is the Society of St. Pius X has been infiltrated, it has been inundated, and it is now becoming and has already become that fake organization, which appears to be to those who like to see it that way, as opposed to modernism, but it's not. Read what the Society of St. Pius Web says, website says about modernism. It doesn't say that it's the most grave of all heresies, that it's a heresy of our times. It says it's a, it's, a, it's a philosophical belief that even has some implications and tendencies to have influence even in our times. It doesn't say what St. Pius X said, which is the grand sewer of all heresies, the collection of all heresies, and that it is the error and heresy of our times. It doesn't say that at all. And so and when, when, when something bad happens in Rome, it is either ignored, ignored completely by the Society of St. Pius X, or it is uh, glossed over in the most soft manner in such a way that those who are in favor of modernism, will not see it condemned. 
And those that are against it can have their consciences placated. And that's what's going to happen now. Expect a statement from, uh, from Menzengrad that is going to say something that sounds like we are sorry and we don't like this decree in so many ways or we're not, we're not totally happy about it, but what are we going to do? And at least it doesn't seem to affect us like it affects them. Whereas what is our duty? To go out to those that are in the grave need and take care of them and bring them the truth, to tell them what is the right thing to do. Priests formed in the Novus Ordo are formed with a false teaching about obedience. We must instruct them what is true obedience. Acts chapter 5, say, uh, the apostles said, we obey God rather than men. There is an order and structure to obedience. And that faith comes first. So, so, so that this decree, Tradiciones Custodes, is a great evil. Further, the Fraternity of St. Peter and the Institute of Christ the King, they are trapped because they have already chosen obedience over faith many years ago. And now their whole foundation is built upon obedience to the unjust and wicked commands of the superiors over the truth. And now they're going to have to decide, can I continue this way or is it time to recognize we made a grave error, a grave mistake, and we turned against God when we turned against the faith being the foundation of our organizations, of our, of our, of our societies. And we've got to make the faith the structure again. And our Jesus of Fev had the right answer to Vatican II. Preach the truth. Establish chapels, hear confessions, establish schools, build independent organizations that are not under the direction of the modernists and wicked ones, and condemn the errors and heresies explicitly so that people understand the evils of the day. And this way, preserve the church from our previous generation onto the next generation. And then there will be souls who will come back to Christ. And Sergeant Lefebvre did that, the traditional priest did that <clears throat> throughout the 1970s and 80s, <coughs> and all the way and some to this very day, but very few, unfortunately, <clears throat> and that this is the only answer to the crisis in which we are today. In any case, we'll close it at that. We'll pray for the priest in the Nova Shorto and the priest in the, in the fraternity of St. Peter to the Christ the King who are now afraid and don't know what to do. And they're looking to Father Pagliarani, looking to the society of St. Pius X, what should I do? What, why, what went wrong? Should I be obedient and suffer this cross? Or should I stand up? This is not a cross that is coming from God. This is a cross that is a sin against, that is an attack of the virtue of fortitude. It is a cross that is not coming from the devil and that must be combated. Don't, don't, don't have a false acceptance of this cross. Oh, I must obey and I must leave the diocese. I must leave the faithful I'm taking care of. I must stop the celebration of the mass. I can only celebrate it quietly in my room. I, I, I'm just going to have to obey. No, it is time to stand up for the truth and to protect the French priests in Dijon should not leave Dijon. They should stay there and take care of those sheep. And though some sheep do want the true faith and true mass, let them know that, that we have been deceived and let us not follow the deception of the devil, but stand firm with the truth and firm with the faith. And, so, and this, this latest evil document, which is Traditiones Custodes, which when, when history shows itself to be completed in the story of Vatican II, it will be seen that Simorum Beatificum was a far more wicked document issued by a more wicked pope than Pope Francis and Traditiones Custodes. Traditiones Custodes, honesty, straight, clear to the point. We don't like you. We don't like the Latin Mass. You cannot say it without our permission. We are trying to eradicate it. Very clearly said. Sumor Pontificum says exactly the same thing, but in satanic, deceptive, demonic speak which is an indication that the one who wrote it is more satanic, more deceptive, and more demonic than Pope Francis. And so it will be seen in history, it's more Pontificum was the most wicked document concerning the Latin Mass. And people believed it was good. And people believed it would hold on, hold on forever. And people believed that it would got better. And people had confidence in the modernists in Rome because of that wicked document. But that wicked document is followed by Traditiones Custodes, which is the natural and only conclusion of Samorum Pontificum. There was no other possibility. There is no other possibility. So we shouldn't be upset at Pope Francis. We shouldn't be upset at Traditiones Custodes. We shouldn't think of it as a great scandal and a great shock. It is simply the natural implementation of the log and logical progression of all of the previous documents concerning the, new the Latin Mass that have come out from Rome. And it's simply the next step in that degradation and destruction of our church. And they will not succeed in their attempt to destroy the church, but it's just the next logical step. We'll close to that and bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.